Welcome to our third section of our Holy Week Art Reflections. Following the same pattern, we will again today look at another artwork while reflecting on the lectionary text for Holy Wednesday and concluding with a meditation by Ian Reed from the book Meditations from the Iona Community. Also remember to send me an email if you wish to chat or if you want me to put you on our mailing list to receive links to the videos. My email is in the description of this video. Today's artwork, aiding our reflection for Holy Wednesday, is from a series of artworks by the artist William Kurelik titled The Passion of the Christ. And this particular part, part of the series is named And while they were at the table, he said, Believe me, one of you is to betray me. John 13 verses 21 to 30. After Jesus had said this, he was deeply troubled and declared openly, I am telling you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. The disciples looked at one another, completely puzzled about whom he meant. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was sitting next to Jesus. Simon Peter motioned to him and said, Ask him whom he is talking about. So that disciple moved closer to Jesus' side and asked, Who is it, Lord? Jesus answered, I will dip some bread in the sauce and give it to him. He is the man. So he took a piece of bread, dipped it, and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered him. Jesus said to him, Be quick about what you are doing. None of the others at the table understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas was in charge of the money bag, some of the disciples thought that Jesus had told him to go and buy what they needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. Judas accepted the bread and went out at once. It was night. I have always struggled to identify how I really feel about the person of Judas as he is portrayed in the Bible. As is expected, I feel a certain amount of animosity towards him because he seems to be a sneaky and underhanded person. Two-faced might be a good way to describe him. But as I myself have continued on my faith journey, I've come to experience a different emotion when I think of Judas. And I must admit today, I feel mostly pity for him. What he did remains a testimony to his character, which may have been very questionable, but I can't help to feel that he is also a victim, caught up in something he was not equipped to handle. His weaknesses are exploited by the Jewish council, and in the end he bitterly regrets what he did, so much so that he throws away the money he received and hangs himself. We all have weaknesses, and those weaknesses often become puppet strings for sinister purposes. Maybe during today's reflection, I am reminded of my duty also to those who are weak. Our meditation from the Iona community by Ian Reed, we are using today is called Supporting the Weak. Many are weak, some of the time. Some are weak all of the time. Some are physically weak through illness or through disability. Some are mentally weak. Many have not reached their potential because they have not been enabled to do so. Some are psychologically weak on account of the experience through which they have passed. Insecurity in their childhood may have led imagined hostility on the part of other, others, an insecurity which has led to assertiveness. Some have spiritual weakness, perhaps caused by what appears to be undeserved suffering. 
perhaps because of apparent rejection by an uncaring person or group. There is much weakness in the world. Weakness which is admitted. Weakness which is hidden. Weakness which is disguised. Weakness which is denied. Those who are strong can share with those who are weak so that the weak become strong. Let us pray. Our Lord Jesus, on our way with you to the cross during this Holy Week, we encounter on the way many places we find uncomfortable because it exposes our weaknesses, our issues and hang-ups about many things. We are reminded that this does not measure up to the suffering you endured. We who have much turn our attention to those who have nothing. We who have our health, be it physical or mental, pray for those in desperate need of healing and comfort. We who have time to spend with our loved ones, pray for all the brave women and men working in the front lines of the current COVID-19 crisis. We who have employment security at the moment pray for all those who live in financial uncertainty. We who are emotionally and physically strong in some aspects of our lives pray for those who are weak. Holy Spirit, inspire us to use our strength to support others when they fail. Lead us to be gracious and accepting of others' weaknesses and failures, while giving us strength and the right opportunities to nurture growth in others as well as ourselves. Amen. <laughs>